Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. Today we are going to talk about the circling approach or the circle to land approach. I'm going to show you an example over here in uh, Faro where we will commence the RMP approach for runway 10 with a circle to land for runway 28. Before we start going into the exact procedures, let's quickly talk about a uh, little more general knowledge for the circling approach. The 737 is a category Charlie airplane, and as you can see on the chart over here already, there are maximum speeds for the approach, and also those go hand in hand with the obstacle free protection area around the approach. For the category Charlie airplane, for this particular approach, we have a maximum speed of 180 knots. However, you will see that by the standard operating procedure we are going to use, we will actually fly it at quite a bit of a slower speed to give us some margin. The obstruction clearance area during the circling approach for category Charlie airplane is 4.2 nautical miles around the landing runway threshold, and this provides an obstacle clearance of 394 feet. And therefore, we have done our usual setup for the approach. Since we're in VMC around the landing runway, we have a four mile ring where we are going to extend the landing gear. And then around our landing runway, runway to eight, we have the 4.2 mile ring to mark our obstruction free area around the landing runway. And you can already see that I've also drawn a radial of uh, 191 around the landing runway. That is going to be the point where we will start our timing for the landing runway. For the rest of the approach, if we look at the RMP approach runway 10, we have our circle to land minimums down here. First of all, it's just not authorized north of the runway, so we are going to circle towards the south. And the MDA is 630 feet, which is 606 feet above the aerodrome, and we need a visibility of 2,400 meters. When we look outside, both visibility and uh, MDA are not going to be an issue for this approach. What we have to do, however, is around the MDA up to the next 100 feet, so we're going to set an MDA of 700 feet. And the reason we're doing this is because we will be using the autopilot to level off at the MDA to fly the circling approach. You are going to see this in a few moments in further detail. Apart from that, we have to calculate our tracks and distances. Note that I'm as explicitly saying tracks here because the 737's autopilot only has a heading select function and not a track select function, so we will have to apply corrections to our heading to compensate for the wind. The general circling procedure is as follows. We're going to fly the standard instrument approach for the uh, opposite of the landing runway down to the circling minimum, surrounded up to the next 100 feet, so in ca this case 700 feet. By the time that we get either VNAV ALT or altitude hold engaging, depending on which uh, VNAV setup is installed in your airplane, we will first of all set the missed approach altitude. So in this case, it's going to be 3000 feet. And then set our first track for the circling and thereafter we are going to engage heading select to actually start our turn. We're going to fly the circling procedure with gear down, flaps 15, and we are going to select the landing flap setting by the time that we turn to the final approach. In order for the timing, as soon as your wings are level, when you have started turning 45 degrees off track into the circling direction, so remember in this case, the chart set, we're going to circle south of the landing runway, so we're going to turn 45 degrees to the south, making a course of 1, 4, 6. Are level. We are going to start our timing and we're looking to fly on that new heading for exactly 20 seconds minus half the tailwind component. So you can see the tailwind component by going on the progress page and then clicking next page. You will see that currently we have six knots tailwind and we will have to reevaluate the track. So if we had, for example, four knots of tailwind, we would be using 20 seconds minus half the tailwind, making 18 seconds. When the time is up, we are going to turn left in onto our approach track again. And when we pass the radial, 
the uh, 90 degree radial uh, beam the landing threshold. Then we're going to start our timing for our downwind lag. And the timing for the downwind lag consists of three seconds per 100 feet above the landing aerodrome elevation. So remember that the chart set that we are going to, that our circling minimum is 606 feet above the aerodrome elevation. We rounded this up to the next 100, so we're going to use 700 feet. And that makes 7 times 3 for our downwind timing, minus half the tailwind component. So again, we're looking at 7 times 3, 21 seconds, minus half the tailwind, which is likely going to be somewhere around 6 knots. So minus 3. 21 minus 3 is 18. So we will fly 18 seconds on the downwind once we have passed a beam the landing runway threshold. Thereafter, we're going to start our turn towards the final. Extend the landing flaps. Note that in a circling approach, you are permitted to go directly from flap 15 to flap 40, should you elect to use flap 40 for the landing. Contrary to the normal procedure where you would first select flap 25 and then flap 40. We will start the final turn by setting the correct heading and then we can use our track line on the navigation display to align ourselves perfectly with the landing runway. Note that you have the angle of bank selector here in order to vary your bank and to correct for a possible over or under shoot. As soon as you have the landing runway perfectly inside and when you are basically starting to track inbound to the landing runway, so once there is less than 90 degrees remaining for the turn, we're going to disconnect the autopilot, recycle the flight directors, and then we will have to fly ourselves down visually on the approach. The landing gate for a circling approach is 300 feet, but the aircraft has to be fully configured with the landing checklist complete by 500 feet. In case of a missed approach, we will have to commence the missed approach procedure of our landing runway. So in this case, we can see over here, we're going to fly to Foxtrot Romeo 459 and then to Gimal climbing 3000 feet. In order to do that, we have to self-position ourselves back onto the final approach for the instrument approach that we have been carrying out. Now, what does that mean? It means that if we have to go around, we have to start a left-hand turn, or rather, a turn into the direction where we have been circling. Note that we said we're going to circle south of the landing runway. So in case of missed approach, we will turn into the circling direction, and then basically fly ourselves around, come back onto the final approach for runway 1-0, to join the missed approach of runway 1-0. And we have to climb to at least the circling minimum before we can start accelerating on the approach, uh, sorry, on the missed approach. So today that's 700 feet, but we also need to establish ourselves on the final approach track of the approach runway before we start accelerating. So all in all, what does that mean? If we have to go around, we're going to, to use the standard procedure, go around, flap 15, set go around thrust. And then we're going to keep the flaps in 15 for the entire maneuvering until we are established on the final approach for Romeo 10 again. And only then we can start accelerating and cleaning up the airplane and basically join the normal missed approach procedure. So to recap, if we go around from a circling approach, we're going to self-maneuver into the direction where we circled establish ourselves on the final approach track for, runway, for the approach runway with the flaps continuously kept in 15. And that is because the autopilot is going to command a speed of 172 knots for as long as flaps 15 are extended. And that is within the maximum speed of 180 knots that we had for this approach. And as soon as we are then established on the final approach, we're just going to join the normal go-around procedure. Finally, one more word on the standard circling approach procedures. 
be aware that you cannot use the approach mode for your instrument approach leading to the circle of land, a uh, circle to land. And the reason for that is that both glide slope and glide path modes are not going to capture the MCP selected altitude, but are going to descend through them. And the only way to get rid of the approach mode is by either deselecting the approach frequencies, which we however might need for the missed approach, or disconnecting the autopilot and recycling the flight director, which we don't want to do. We want to fly the whole approach until the final turn to final approach with the autopilot. Now one thing said, the circle to land is a rather complex procedure, which is also the reason why we have to practice it in the simulator every six months. All right, this much said, let's start our actual approach and I'm going to show you what a circle to land looks like when it's practically flown. One small final note, I have my simulator paused here and due to a current issue with Microsoft Flight Simulator I had to disengage the autopilot and autothrottle for the time the simulator was paused. So when I'm resuming the flight, the first thing I'm going to do is to re-engage the autopilot and autothrottle. Now if you are coming in for a circle to land approach, you will probably not have your simulator paused on final. So if you already have the autopilot in, keep it in and uh, disregard the fact that for the purpose of this video I quickly have to re-engage the autopilot. All right, here we go. So we're approaching descent. 700 feet, mean of half, speed and time. Note that all the way until we are leveling off at the minimums, the procedure for the approach is exactly the same as for any non-position approach. So, if you're wondering as what I'm doing here and uh, why I'm doing it on the first part of the approach, check out my non-position approach tutorials for either the RNAV or the VOR approaches. Faf, 2,000 feet, no flags. We have a landing runway inside, so we're going to spare ourselves the distance versus altitude checks. down, flat 50. Landing checklist. Engine start switches. Continuous. Speed brake. Arm green light. Landing gear. Down. Holding at the flaps. 1000. Checked. Enough out. Let's love. Let's wait until it's leveled off. Minimums. Continue. And here we are leveled. So, three thousand feet. Set. Just quickly going to press altitude hold here. And we want to go. Track of her one four six. Wings level, timing. So right now we have a tailwind component of uh, 4 knots, so we are looking for 18 seconds.
three, two, one, turn out. Left, back to a track of one, zero, one. And as soon as we are on the beam radial here, or a beam the landing threshold, like we are right now, we're going to start the timing again. Now we said we're looking for 21 seconds, minus half the tailwind. So let's make it 19 seconds. Three, two, one. Accidentally set the landing, uh, set the bank selector. So, flaps 40. BRF plus 5. And complete the landing checklist. Flaps 40, 40, green light. Landing checklist complete. And now we can use the track line over here to align ourselves with the runway. So, you can see I tend to overshoot right now, so I'm selecting a bank angle of 30 in order to get back onto the track. And there we have the Roma inside. Disconnect autopilot, disconnect auto throttle, start the descent. And recycle the flight directors. of this tutorial we're going to bring the airplane to stop on the runway. Now this is how you fly a circling approach. Now I just quickly need to um, mention two things that happened during this approach that were not 100% standard. The first of all was the airplane entered VNAV alt mode, and when I set the missile approach altitude, it, for some reason, wanted to start the descent again. If that happens, press altitude hold, so that the airplane is actually going to maintain its altitude. The second, you saw the altitude deviations that we had on the approach. Now, you would not want to descend below the circling minimum until you are established on the final approach. However, at present, the version of the PMDG 737 that I'm using got a bug that prevents it to maintain altitude precisely when flying at slow speeds, so that is why it happened. If you are flying your circling approach, make sure that you're actually going to maintain the circling minimum precisely until you're established on final approach and on the puppies. So, this concludes our tutorial on the circling approach with the Boeing 737. I hope that you found this interesting and I'm looking forward to see you all again on a future video. If you liked my videos, I would appreciate if you would consider a small donation using the Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to see you all again soon.